How to become a Pastafarian? Pastafarianism is the fastest growing carbohydrate based religion in the world. Pastafarians worship the flying spaghetti monster, FSM, an omnipotent deity who, according to the church, does not necessarily exist. Outsiders refer to Pastafarians as satirists, opponents refer to them as heretics, and landlubbers refer to them as dirty pirates, but one thing is certain, they adore beer. Joining the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster 1. I simply want to be a part of the church. That's it. All that's required to become a Pastafarian, according to the official website of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster FSM, is a desire to be one. You are not required to take part in any type of ceremony, pay any kind of fee, make a commitment or pledge of any kind, give away your current faith. Do you have any knowledge about Pastafarianism? Believe in the FSM literally. 2. Discover the fundamental beliefs of Pastafarianism. So you've simply made yourself a Pastafarian by wishing to be one? Great! Now is an excellent moment to learn more about what you've just agreed to. The following are some of the key pillars that comprise the Pastafarian religion's beliefs. However, you do not have to physically believe in them to be a member. The Flying Spaghetti Monster is the name given to the highest deity, FSM. He is an eternal creature who is invisible, almighty, and omniscient and takes the shape of a large clump of spaghetti with two meatballs and eyes. He created the entire cosmos in four days, followed by three days of rest. Pirates are revered as holy beings. Pirates, according to the religion, aid in the fight against global warming and catastrophic disasters. Every Pastafarian should aspire to be a pirate. Pastafarian paradise consists of beer volcanoes and stripper factories. Many supporters believe that it will cater to everyone's desires, therefore the volcano can also generate non-alcoholic drinks, and the stripper factory will cater to personal choices, such as gender or whether to interact with the strippers at all. 3. Investigate Pastafarianism's sacred writings. Browse any of the Pastafarian scriptures for an excellent introduction to your new religion. The Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster is the most essential book to Pastafarians. The Quill Award-nominated Gospel was released in 2006, in response to author Bobby Henderson's open letter to the Kansas State Board of Education, in which he satirically criticized its ruling requiring the teaching of intelligent design in public schools. The Gospel delves deeply into the numerous components of Pastafarian doctrine, making it essential for new members. The Loose Canon, accessible online, is another prominent Pastafarian holy book that includes religious stories, daily life guidance, prayers, and the writings of various important church officials such as Captain Jeff. Following the principles of Pastafarianism. 1. The eight should be followed. I'd really prefer it if you didn't. This list of regulations, also known as the Eight Condiments, provided by the FSM himself to the pirate Captain Mosey serves as the basic code of behavior for all Pastafarians. There were initially ten rules, but Mosey fell and broke two on his trip down the mountain, explaining Pastafarians' loose, moral standards. I'd really rather you didn't act like a sanctimonious, holier than thou ass when describing my nudely goodness, is one of the eight surviving commandments. I'd much rather you didn't use my existence to oppress, subjugate, punish, eviscerate, and or be mean to others. I'd really rather you didn't judge people based on how they seem, dress, talk, or, well, just play nice, okay? I'd rather you didn't engage in conduct that offends yourself or your willing, consenting partner of legal age and mental maturity. I'd rather you didn't challenge other people's bigoted, misogynist, hateful ideas on an empty stomach. I'd rather you didn't construct multi-million dollar churches, temples, mosques, shrines to my nudely goodness when the money could be better spent, take your pick. Putting an end to poverty. Disease cure. 
Living in peace, loving with passion, and cutting cable costs. I'd rather you didn't go about telling everyone I talk to you. I'd rather you didn't do to others what you would have them do to you if you're into, um, stuff that uses a lot of leather, lubricant, Las Vegas. However, if the other person is interested, as stated in number 4, then go ahead and do it. 2. Talk like a pirate and or dress like a pirate whenever possible. Pirates have a status in Pastafarianism comparable to saints in Christianity or Bodhisattvas in Buddhism. Indeed, the sheer presence of pirates is said to mitigate natural disasters. All Pastafarians are urged to dress, speak, and act like pirates, especially if they are about to preach the FSM's sacred message. Pirates generally dress in showy colonial-era garb, such as ruffled shirts, colorful jackets, bandanas, and eye patches. Pirates adore beer, grog, romance, the open seas, and anything that allows them to take a day off from work. 3. Pastafarian holidays are celebrated. Pastafarianism, like every other religion, has its own set of annual feasts. These rare days necessitate joyful celebration, humble reflection, and a special commitment to the FSM. The following is a concise calendar of the most important days in the Pastafarian calendar. 9. Every Friday. Pastafarians observe the Sabbath on Friday. However, no extra effort is required. Pastafarians can enjoy this day by drinking beer and resting. Ramadan. A month of fasting in which Pastafarians only consume pasta and noodle meals after sundown. The start and end dates differ from year to year. Pastover. Pastafarians feast on noodles, dress up like pirates, and pass the eye patch in a ceremony. The date changes from year to year, although it is usually in March or April. Talk like a pirate day, September 19th. The name says it all. Pirate outfits are suggested but not essential. Halloween, October 31st. Pastafarians must dress up like pirates. Holiday. Pastafarians celebrate a hazily defined Christmas-like occasion in late December. No specific date is specified by the church. Whatever they like, but especially with spaghetti, pirates, and beer. 4. Please send your prayers to the FSM. Devout Pastafarians can opt to pray on Fridays, every day, or whenever they want. There are no hard laws concerning when and when to worship. Though prominent Pastafarians have composed several regularly used prayers, you are not required to use them. Any sincere prayer, even one made up on the moment, will be accepted by the FSM. If you wish to pray, finish each one with the holy word, Raman. Here's only one Pastafarian prayer. There are many more available online. Knowledge Prayer. Thy sauce, grant, the flying spaghetti monster. And noodles in sauce. And meatballs in noodles. And knowledge in meatballs. And, as a result of knowledge, knowledge of what is tasty. And a fondness for pasta stemming from an understanding of what is tasty. And the love of the flying spaghetti monster comes from spaghetti. Ramen. 5. Persecute no one who does not believe in the FSM. While Pastafarians are encouraged to spread the FSM's message in their daily lives, they are not permitted to harass, intimidate, or otherwise trouble anyone who do not accept the FSM. Not only does this violate numerous of the I'd really rather you didn't, but it's also impolite and contrary to Pastafarianism's laid-back, pasta-eating, live-and-let-live mindset. This rule applies not only to adherents of other religions who consider Pastafarianism a heretic, but also to atheists and agnostics. 6. Above all, have a nice time. Pastafarianism is intended to be a fun religion for its adherents. While FSM followers range from casual to ardent, none should take their Pastafarian views so seriously that they can't crack open a beer on a Friday afternoon as the FSM intended in his wonderful genius. Don't worry about anything relating to Pastafarianism. 
Remember, it's a religion with a holiday named, Remenden. There is no obligation to participate if beer and spaghetti do not appeal to you. The FSM are aware of your nutritional needs and personal preferences. Find another activity that you enjoy. Becoming a master of Pastafarianism. 1. Choose the Pastafarian sect that best meets your needs. Pastafarians who want to develop their faith may eventually choose to join a religious sub-sect. These sects interpret the FSM's words differently, resulting in different activities and beliefs among its followers. Unless a sect violates one of the I'd really rather you didn'ts, there is no right or wrong sect to belong to, it is simply a matter of personal preference. The Orthodox and Reformed sects are two of the largest in Pastafarianism. Orthodox followers are more strict and literal in their interpretations of Pastafarian beliefs, whilst Reformed believers are more open to allegorical interpretations. Many Reformed Pastafarians, for example, believe in automated creationism, which holds that the FSM started the formation of the universe with a single event, the Big Boil, then let natural processes gradually develop life. Orthodox Pastafarians, on the other hand, believe that the FSM created everything on purpose and literally. 2. FSM propaganda is used to spread the good news of the church. The FSM church welcomes its adherents to spread its message as long as it does not result in harassment or persecution of others. One of the most common methods is to distribute propaganda in the form of flyers, pamphlets, brochures, and other printed materials. The church's official propaganda materials are available here. If you like, you can also create your own propaganda materials. However, make certain that your resources are in accordance with Pastafarian theology. It would be inappropriate, for example, to distribute flyers proclaiming, the flying spaghetti monster despises those who practice other religions. This is not correct. The FSM welcomes individuals of all faiths. 3. Learn how to become a Pastafarian minister. Are you ready to stop being a follower in the FSM church and become a leader? It is simple to become an officially ordained minister, and you can do it online here. To acquire your formal certificate and have your name put to the register of ministers, you must pay $25. 4. Make an effort to get your faith recognized by a government entity. Pastafarian heroes don't give up even when they're informed they don't belong to a genuine religion. Obtaining official recognition for your faith from local, state, or national government bodies is one of the most daring and self-sacrificing things a Pastafarian can undertake. It not only raises awareness of Pastafarianism, but it also demonstrates the arbitrary character of other religions' privileged advantages in society. Wearing a pasta strainer on your head in official shots is one technique to accomplish this. Some instances are provided below. Lucas Novi, a Czech Pastafarian, won a judicial struggle in 2013 to wear a strainer on his head for his government ID photo, citing religious grounds. Christopher Schaeffer became the first publicly Pastafarian politician in the United States in 2014, when he was sworn in as a member of the Pomfret, New York Town Council while wearing a strainer. In Oklahoma, Shauna Hammond was permitted to wear their religious hat for her driver's license photo. Jessica Steinhauser exercised her religious freedom in Utah by wearing a metal colander on her head for her driver's license photo. The church's proposal to conduct marriage ceremonies was accepted by the New Zealand government in 2015. Thanks for watching. Now you know how to become a Pastafarian.